from my touring electric skateboard that I've done miles of backpacking on at this point, to my DIY prototype electric snowboard that I've been pushing harder and harder, to the world's first sodium ion powered electric skateboard, I've really started to build up a interesting collection of electric rideables. And I want to take time once a year just to check in on them and see how they're all doing with all of the crazy stuff that I put them through. So the first one that's on the list is my lead acid powered electric skateboard. I just built this to be a cheap, very cheap, local cruiser that I can put around and pick up lunch during my lunch hour. It doesn't go very far and it doesn't go very fast, but it's just a great little cruiser that I can keep fully charged since it's powered by lead acid. So I can just take it and go out on a run when I need it and not have to worry about the charge level because it's always charged once I get back. And unfortunately it just straight up died on me one day recently. The ESC turns on and it looks like it receives signals from the remote, but for whatever reason, the motor isn't receiving any power. So I don't know if it's the ESC itself that's on the fritz or if the motor itself died. And despite having been accidentally dropped on it, the 3D printed battery crate that houses the three lead acid batteries wired in series is actually still holding up pretty well. It's not showing any signs of cracking or fatigue. And as long as I continue to be careful with it and not, you know, smash it against the concrete repeatedly, I'm pretty sure it'll continue to hold up. Next up is my sodium ion powered electric mountain board, or at least sometimes it's powered by sodium ion batteries because unfortunately recently I had the sodium ion battery that I built for the skateboard go on the fritz. I don't know what happened. I put a few charge cycles through this battery at this point and no issues, but all of a sudden one day I went to connect the charger to the charger port and it shorted and basically blew up in my face. I looked at all the wiring, the wiring still seems fine. So before I fix that, I do need to figure out what actually went wrong there because I can't trust that battery until I do. And aside from that, the sodium ion battery has been a little bit of a letdown. It has a theoretical capacity of 372 watt hours, but what I found out in testing is that once that sodium ion battery gets down to about half charge, it loses any ability to provide meaningful load and actually push my skateboard forward, meaning I'm basically limited to only half of the charge. Because this electric mountain board wasn't just as a testbed platform for the sodium ion battery, it also was to be my new platform for electric skateboard backpack. Backpacking. This electric mountain board is vastly underpowered for trying to backpack. With me and all of my gear, that is close to 300 pounds, and on a 36 volt drivetrain on massive 8 inch wheels, as soon as this thing gets even a little bit off road into grass, or if the gravel rail trail happens to be a little bit muddy, it just loses any ability to pick up any speed and slows me down to an absolute crawl. And if I happen to use a weaker lithium battery that happens to be smaller with a limited amp draw, the problem is made even worse. And then with that slow down, there's the time aspect of it as well. If it slows me down to 10 kilometers an hour, that means that in order to achieve two legs of 30 kilometers in a day, that'll take me six hours. And aside from all that, the only other issue I'm really having with it is at the front of the board near where the trucks mount, the bottom two layers of the deck actually have some cracks in them. I have to patch that up with some super glue and make sure that those cracks don't propagate. And then we can also touch on my electric dirt surfer, which is actually going quite strong. And this is one of the projects that I'm actually the most proud of. Now, I didn't actually have to do much to build this thing. I just took an off-the-shelf dirt surfer, swapped out the rear wheel for a similar sized hub motor. My only real complaint with this build is that the foot space available on the deck with the battery container mounted is pretty limited. And if I were to do this build again, I would probably go with an even bigger battery container because I can only carry one battery in that battery container at a time, which means any other batteries I carry have to go in my pack. And one thing I learned taking this dirt surfer out on some trips is that it's actually surprisingly difficult to ride long distances. It does hell on your lower legs. Even once you start going faster and pick up some speed and it's more stable, it still takes a lot of effort to stay balanced on that thing. It's just one of those things that actually requires you to train to be able to ride it for long periods of time, even though it's doing all the work propelling you forward. Now, I did recently make a video where I tried using a trekking pole to help with one of the issues I was having, which was figuring out how to start this thing from a standstill when I didn't have anything to hold onto to push off of, because it takes a hot second for it to get enough momentum to actually be stable enough for me to not fall off. And that's easy enough to do when I have a tree or a post or something I can push off of. But if I have to stop in the middle of the trail and there's nothing for me to hold onto, that was a huge problem that I encountered. But I found that even carrying just one trekking pole to help stabilize me and push off from helps a lot and puts me one step closer to bringing this thing back into service for backpacking trips. And and since day one, the front tire that came with the Dirt Surfer has had a slow 
little leak, but it's been slow enough I find that I didn't actually have to swap it out for a fresh inner tube. As long as I fill it up once a day at the start of the day, it holds pressure long enough throughout the day for me to ride it. And then as long as I repeat that every morning, I'm a-okay. Next up, we could take a look at my original classic DIY touring electric skateboard. And it's still holding up perfectly well. I did choose a high quality deck when I built that thing and that is really showing. It is still holding up. It's been banged up to heck and back and definitely showing signs of wear and tear. I think the bushings might be starting to go because even though I've wound them down super tight at this point, leaning side to side, there's like a dead zone in the middle where it kind of like pops over from one side to the other. And although the front tires are stock, still the originals that came on there, I did have a trip where I lost a wheel. So I replaced both wheels in the back. And now that I have the electric mountain board and some of my other builds, it's made me realize just how lightweight that touring build actually is. And aside from that, the only issue, if you want to call it that, that I'm having with the touring electric skateboard is that ever since I basically submerged that board underwater when I was doing that one super rainy TZT trip, uh, there's been a constant clicking in the motor whenever I'm using it. Doesn't affect performance, but you can definitely hear it in some of the videos I've made about that board since that trip. Next up is my electric raft. Super happy with this thing. I just haven't really gotten to take it out on as many trips as I would like. Gotten it out a few times, but definitely needs more love in some of the upcoming adventures I have planned for this summer. On the one trip I took it out on, on the TCT, I, I really have to be careful about bottoming out the propeller because Lake Kuchiching, where I took that out on, was actually a surprisingly shallow lake and I bottomed out the propeller. So on that note, in order to be more cautious and ready for those sorts of scenarios, I'm thinking about 3D printing some extra propellers to carry with me in case I accidentally shred the one that I have installed. I still haven't picked up the second battery that I had planned for it, so it still only has the one battery for a total of up to 25 kilometers of range. Once I get the second battery, that'll double it up to 50 kilometers. And I also still need to get a second solar panel. So I've been talking about it a lot, but definitely my one goal that I want to accomplish this year with this raft is the autonomous conversion. I have the parts picked out. The only thing I have to sort out is how I'm going to mount that servo and connect it to the motor shaft. I've decided that I'm going to keep the control of speed manual and not hook that up to RG Pilot. I'm only going to get RG Pilot to do the steering. And then of course we have my electric snowboard project. It has a very limited use case and it was a very warm winter. We actually didn't have very many chances for me to take it out this year because of how little snow there was. There's very specific cases that I can actually use that thing. The snow has to be very shallow or very hard packed. Otherwise it just spins in the powder and can't actually gain traction. That being said, I did have a couple opportunities to take it out and really push it just a little bit further. It's not quite ready for an overnight backpacking trip yet. The major problem I have to sort out is the wheel, which one half of it keeps splitting. It's always the same half. I need to sort out that design flaw. And then once you really get this thing to be more stable and more reliable, we could try and take it on its first overnighter, hopefully this coming winter. One of the other problems I was having with it where in wetter conditions with packing snow would start to build up along the front lip of the wheel well, I wound up cutting out a larger gap there and that has solved the issue for the most part. I noticed that there still is a little bit of buildup, but it's no longer enough to really stop the wheel from spinning. And definitely at the very least this coming winter, I do want to try and do a proper range test with it. It being a completely different kind of vehicle from an electric skateboard, I really don't know what kind of range to expect from this thing. So that's about it. I just wanted to give you guys an update on all of my electric vehicles and electric rideables and how they're doing. That's about it. See you guys.